Hello and welcome to the episode 129 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we'll have a breakthrough for the recording career of the Fab Four, a meeting with Bob Dylan and another bitter argument during the band's long death. On the 9th of May 1961, we have the usual concert at the Top Ten Club for the second Hamburg residency of the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums. One year later, in 1962, Beatles manager Brian Epstein met George Martin of Parlophone Records for the second time. You will remember that Martin had expressed interest in meeting the band during his first encounter with Epstein in February, as detailed in episode 44 of What A Fab Day, but he had done nothing about it. Epstein decided to pursue the matter with Martin actively. If he had a change of heart, Epstein would have introduced the Beatles to Philips Records. The two spoke today and decided to adjourn the meeting to the 6th of June, with the Beatles going to the Abbey Road Studios for the first time. Martin wasn't guaranteeing any contract naturally, as he wanted to see how the band worked in a studio environment before making his final decision. Regardless, the paperwork in the EMI archives clearly and beyond doubt indicates that George Martin had offered the recording contract to Brian Epstein, starting the normal paperwork trail that would lead to one. In all probability, it was just a matter of having the contract ready. Epstein communicated the news to the band, busy in Hamburg for their third residency, with a telegram. Congratulations, boy! EMI requests recording session. Please rehearse new material. Naturally, during the night, the lads, still with Pete Best on drums, performed at the Star Club as usual. In 1965, the Beatles were busy around London to record some more exterior sequences for their film Help. At first, they were in New Bond Street, walking past the jewel and watch shop Watches of Switzerland, then to the Blandford Street exterior of the Raja Hama Indian restaurant, which was actually the Dolphin restaurant in real life. After that, John Lennon and Ringo Starr were filmed at the South Western Road in Twickenham, close to the Turk's Head pub, one of the locations of their first feature film, A Hard Day's Night. And finally, Ringo Lone was filmed on the waiting scale outside a grocery shop in Winchester Road. After the day of work, the four caught the evening performance of Bob Dylan at the Royal Albert Hall. After the show, they were admitted to Dylan's suit at the Savoy Hotel with singer Alma Cogan and Cynthia Lennon. On the 9th of May 1966, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr laid down 10 piano and drums rhythm track takes for Paul's new song, For No One. Working at the EMI Studios in London from 7 to 11 pm, they completed the session recording clavichord, maracas and cymbals over dubs. Despite being present in the studio, John Lennon and George Harrison did not perform a single note for the song, the second time for this album after Eleanor Rigby. Breaking up the pace of the episode for a minute, I would like to remind you to be different from the masses and make yourself heard. Whether you are liking this episode or not, please take a second to drop me a line. It does feel lonely in the studio, and your comment might light up my day and convince me that my efforts to create this and other music-related content is not all in vain. If you feel like doing a bit more to support me, then by all means visit www.simonmas.com support and check out the many things you can do to show me how fab you are. Thank you for making the difference. Returning to the topic of our podcast, in 1967 the Beatles were again busy at the EMI Studios, this time between 11 pm and 6.15 am. The session, though, was as unproductive as it was long. According to Beatles historian Mark Lewison, the only result 
was a 16-minute long instrumental jam with two guitars, drums and a harmonium. According to what Lewison says, it seems that the band was out of tune too, but with the ongoing psychedelic experimentation characterizing the period, we will never know whether this was accidental or deliberate. Until we will be invited to listen to the tapes, that is. Let's start the last section of this episode, dealing with the events happened on the 9th of May 1969, with a couple of solo releases for the Beatles' new experimental label, Zappel Records. George Harrison's electronic sound and John Lennon and Yoko Ono's unfinished music number no. 2, Life with the Lions, came out today. Electronic sound was composed of two tracks, one per side, made up of electronic experiments allegedly created by George Harrison on his new Moog synthesizer, although the track No Time or Space was actually an edit of a demonstration of the possibilities of the instrument given by Bern Krause, a Moog salesman, allegedly recorded without Krause's knowledge or permission. Life with the Lions contained a recording of the improvised performance that John and Yoko held in Cambridge on the previous 2nd of March, detailed in episode 61 of What A Fab Day, plus four more tracks recorded specifically for the album On Side 2. On a more active front, the four Beatles were with Glyn Jones and Alan Klein at the Olympic Sound Studios for a mixing session and two playbacks of Jones's work on the Get Back tapes. The mixing session, held between 3 and 7 pm, focused again on the editing and insertion of various speeches and song snippets on the master tape of the Get Back album. The first playback session was held between 7 and 10 pm, and after a 30 minute break, a second playback started at 10.30 but it was wrapped up at 11 pm when, as it was happening more and more frequently, it devolved into a fighting match between the two existing factions within the band over the appointment of Klein as business manager by John, George and Ringo. Paul was pressured into signing the deal too. This would have put Klein's company, ABKCO, in the same position that NEMS had occupied during Brian Epstein's days. In the anthology, Paul remembers. The other three said, you've got to sign a contract, he's got to take it to his board. I said, it's Friday night, he doesn't work on a Saturday, and anyway, Alan Klein is a law unto himself. He hasn't got a board he has to report to. Don't worry, we could easily do this on Monday. Let's do our session instead you're not going to push me into this. They said, oh, are you stalling? He wants 20%. I said, tell him he can have 15%. They said, you're stalling. I replied, no, I'm working for us. We're a big act. I remember the exact words. We're a big act, the Beatles. He'll take 15%. But for some strange reason, I think they were so intoxicated with him, they said, no, he's got to have 20% and he's got to report to his board. You've got to sign now or never. So I said, right, that's it, I'm not signing now. When the others walked out of the studio, fuming, Paul remained. By chance, he met with Steve Miller, who had arrived to see if he could use the studio for a recording session. Paul offered to jump with him and ended up recording drums, bass and some guitar parts on Miller's song My Dark Hour. Paul was credited as Paul Ramon in the album and single Sleeves, a name that he had used during the 1960 Silver Beatles tour of Scotland, backing Johnny Gentle. This concludes today's episode. Tune in tomorrow for more stories from the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.